Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Ghost Thief Deadly Shadows. Here, as promised, I have my save from the end of the Blue Heron Inn that I'm about to load up. Today's mission is another one that we go straight into. There's no city hub yet, and it's End of the Bloodline. It's a fun little intro mission. There's only one challenging spot, and that only becomes challenging if there's a glitch. Well, not a glitch, but... It's randomized whether or not we have to deal with it. Nothing or not. like mixing in society, especially if it comes with good loot. See, we, we already heard bag, this. We already looked at the stats. A medallion so. stamped with a griffin. Valuable enough, but more interesting was the conversation I overheard between Lord Julian and the cook. Let's just see what other stuff especially we got. Especially the part about a huge opal and a conspiracy for stealing it. I'd hate to have anyone but me get a stone like that. But I need a better idea where to start looking. If I show the medallion to my fence, I'm sure he'll know more. Heartless Perry always does. Just felt wrong to try to talk over Garrett, even though you've already heard that. But we have already gone over the stats, but I just realized there's gear that I haven't shown you yet. Noisemaker arrow. The noisemaker arrow distracts your opponents who will run over to investigate the location where it lands. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Loot, we got a silver goblet, two copper candlesticks, a copper plate, and two copper goblets. Again, that's a total of 200. We have a velvet bag, which is a quest item. And with that, I'm ready to move on. Garrett's gonna brief you, I'll shut up. fence take a look at Lord Julian's medallion. Perry says the crest belongs to the Rutherfords, one of the oldest so-called great families with a castle in South Quarter and a street named after them. They've got a lot of wealth and a nasty reputation for turning on each other. Based on that conversation I overheard, Julian is definitely carrying on the family tradition. Lord Ember, Julian's cousin, currently resides in the castle and Julian wants revenge. Julian had a good plan. Hide inside a supply cart and ride in after dark. Then signal the cook to open the side door by putting out the lion's head torch in the courtyard. Was a good enough plan for me to use myself? That bloodline opal sounds valuable. And it's better off with me than sitting around in their vault. But I can't get lazy. Ember will have his personal guard and doubtless a few other family tricks in store for anyone who comes after the opal. All right, there's that. We won't be using Garrett's plan, of course, because there's no need to extinguish that torch. There are other entrances. One in particular actually works better, if you ask me. Obviously, we will set it on expert. <clears throat> and remember, expert actually adjusts your objectives, too. For playing on expert, you have to steal at least 90% of the loot in this mission, find at least three special loot items in this mission, do not kill any non-combatants, opponent sensory acuteness is very high, opponent combat ability is very high, the number of opponents is high, and player damage resistance is very low. Let's look at our goals. 
Objective, break into Rutherford Castle, find a clue about how to locate and open the vault, steal the bloodline opal from the vault. When your other objectives are complete, leave the castle grounds the same way you came in the front gate. Note, the cook is waiting for the signal. Put out the lion head torch and he'll open the side entrance located above the torch on the castle ramparts. Our starting gear has changed. We've got one health potion. The health potion heals your damage when you drink it. We've got eight flash bombs, which we haven't seen before. The flash bomb will temporarily blind your opponents. Throw it to the ground to affect everyone in the nearby area. We have not seen the broadhead arrow. Broadhead arrows are your standard projectile in ranged combat. You can also snipe opponents who are not alert by shooting them in the head or chest. No new upgrades yet. We still have our loot from the Blue Heron Inn. We still have our velvet bag. Let's look at the map. Here's the front gate. We start here where the X is. There's the lion's head torch. We will actually go in through a little window over here that I don't think the map very clearly shows. But uh, the basement is where the vault is. You can see there's a guard station in the way, but that's pretty easy to get past. The stairway up to the second floor, the armory, the barracks, all very straightforward from the front gate. This little purple thing, of course, signifies a, one of the infamous load zones in Thief Deadly Shadows. We, that takes us to the inner quarters, where there's an inner courtyard, Lord Ember's chambers, and really the only problem spot in the entire mission is this bedroom tower up here, Lady Elizabeth's room. I'm hopeful that we can have the easy option, but it just seems randomized to me. I don't know if we'll accomplish that or not. Let's get started. Choose your immortality wisely, whether it be the treasure you amass, the torch. Now to give the signal. or the family who succeed you. It's the rain earlier. Everyone's gone in. Black as pitch out here. They doubled the watch. This castle's as old as South Quarter. See the way the stone is? Pulled off an army. Probably has. You really think so? And who knows? It's an old part of town. The streets are all different here, not like Aldale or Stone Market. Ah, what do you know about it? I could have been in the city watch. I knew it that well. I could find my way around blind. <sighs> Bet you've seen things. You wouldn't believe it. Saw a rat once as big as a dog. I saw a man dead in the street without his skin. Come on. Who'd take somebody's skin? Could be... Nah, I won't say it. Nobody knows the whole city. How old it is, how many times it's been built over. Not the Hammerites. Nobody. So we want to wait for their conversation to end, and we want to wait for his back to be turned before we cross this patch of light and mantle up here. I prefer to enter just through this window, leave the torch alone altogether, save the water arrow and all. Supreme ghosting, remember? And as we move in through that window, we complete the objective to break into Rutherford Castle. Sweet. I'm going to go ahead and create a new save. <clears throat> I'm not going to save over my Blue Heron Inn just yet because I'm using a new headset and I'm not yet certain the microphone's working. So I may have to redo this, which is, you know, no big deal. On this desk, you can find two copper coins, 25 each, 1% and 2%. As I mentioned earlier, unlike the first two games, I will be grabbing equipment because starting now for the rest of the game, our equipment loadout is carried over from mission to mission. We keep everything we save and it's not isolated to the mission we're in. The other thing too is that there's a hard cap on the number of everything we can carry. So I feel like keeping a clean inventory, only taking what you need doesn't really apply here because our inventory can't limitlessly expand the way it could in the first two games. So anyway, I'm going to grab the health potion. The health potion heals your damage when you drink it. And we have reading material. 
Cousin, Ember's efforts to protect the opal go beyond reasoning. He's installed a new portcullis in the cellar in front of the vault door. As for the mechanism that controls it, my men have searched everywhere with no results. Everywhere but Ember's own chambers, that is. If you find out anything, let me know. Ember readies himself for Julian's return. He keeps his Rutherford medallion always nearby, and not just because of its value in gold. Lady Elizabeth must have sensed what is coming. I'm sure you've noted her absence as well. As for us, we must play to whomever is the victor. Our time will come. Above all, beware, Cousin C. And that completes our objective to find a clue about how to op locate and open the vault. Gives us a new objective. The vault is protected by a portcullis. Search Lord Ember's chambers to figure out how to open the portcullis. And it also gives us a new note. The vault is in the basement. So as we move into this room, a couple of, a few noteworthy things. First, reading material. Benwick, ill news from the city. The medallion's missing. Julian cries treason, of course. Which of the cousins could have done it? Nestor. P.S. If it's you, tell me and I am with you. It was cleverly done. So you see the guard per parked by the window there. Unlike the first two games, Garrett can silently pick locks. So I'll go ahead and pick the lock on this chest and he shouldn't hear anything. Left, right, left for that one. But when I open the chest... And then when I reclose it, he's going to green alert. So you have to skip this loot if you want to Supreme Ghost the mission. And you can skip this loot. It's worth only 1%. But I'm going to grab it and go for Perfect Thief like I always do. Something. The goblet's worth 25. Takes me up to 3%. I guess it was the wind I heard. And on top of that, on top of the bookcase, you can find two silver candlesticks. 50 gold each, 5% and 8%. I also have to say, just the klepto that I am, I like getting the percentage acknowledgements of how much loot I've found. So with those, we can open this door. This one is up right, left, and if I remember right, he'll green alert again when I open and shut the door. Oh, maybe not open, but I bet he will when I close it. Must not have been anything. Yeah, there we go. I knew he'd green alert when I shut the door. So that's another supreme bust. Can't really do anything about it. So we've snuck in through here. I'm going to head over to the barracks and clear it out next. It's almost ridiculous how easy it is to move around in here. For this guy, we just need to follow him. And wall flatten as soon as we get past all the light. And as you see, no green alerts, no nothing. So we roll into the barracks, no trouble at all. No need to put out any lights. I do like that on top of everything else, guards. Notice if you put out lights, even if you snuff candles. There's usually no need to do it anyway. So pick open this chest. It's a simple left, right, left. We should be able to open it without alerting the sleeper. Another goblet inside worth 25 brings me up to 9%. Nice and easy. If we head over to the other barracks room. Take care not to get spotted by that dude. There's an unlocked chest with a plate inside. Worth 50 brings me up to 11%. Still nice and easy. So now, if we head up this passage, first I'll grab another health potion. I'll read this. 
All guards take note. A portcullis has been installed in the basement in front of the Rutherford Vault as added protection for the Bloodline Opal. Only Lord Ember has the ability to open the portcullis. Lord Ember expects his cousin Julian to try for the gem soon. Be on watch for anything suspicious. Captain Williams. Hit that switch. It opens the side door in the passage that Garrett was theoretically planning to take inside. Be careful, because there are two guards in the courtyard down below. We're just out here to grab this goblet off the top of the barrel. Another 25 brings me up to 12%. Actually, nobody can hear me in here, so I can go ahead and get up and run. Reclose the side door. Supreme Ghosting has us put everything back the way we found it. Now next, I'm going to go after something that's just a tad on the tricky side. There's a piece of jade in here. Just have to time it well. To grab it out of the statue's hands without first alert from either the patroller or more likely the standing guard. So anyway, the jade was... What was it actually worth? It was worth 100, and it brought me up to 17%. Still no first alerts. No nothing. Oh yeah, I... The standing guard will green alert if I open that door, so... We just need to sneak by this patroller again. Which really isn't too hard to do. Just cross this spot while his back is turned. Hmm? Yikes! I didn't quite move fast enough. You just... You want to wall flatten and squeak past him on the wall right when he turns. What's that, then? Oops. Once you're close, of course, take care not to step off the carpet at top speed. Yikes! Who's that, then? Dang it. Looks like I need to break right instead of left, although I don't think he's got a preset direction to turn. But he's done left twice in a row, so I might as well try right and see what happens. That's what I'm talking about, baby. So to the left is the passage to the basement. Not here, but the next left. No need to go there until we've been to Lord Ember's chambers and opened the portcullis. We'll wait for him to turn and slip in behind him. We can use the central pillars, pretty good hard cover to get past him. I may have to wait for him to cycle back, because I think his peripheral vision will catch me if I try to cross now. Oh, guess not. Good. I'm headed to the armory. Nothing in here but some broadhead arrows. Of course, I think I timed this poorly. Uh-oh. Yep. We'll wait at the end of the hall until we see him patrol away. It's a much better plan, I'd say. Just crouch here in the darkness. Wait for him to patrol up, and then we'll follow him in.
So at the end of the mission, I'm going to have to calculate whether or not it's possible to Supreme Ghost by skipping loot. So, so far, 25 total has entailed uh, taking at least a... F well, never mind. I can't Supreme Ghost because uh, Benny heard me close the door behind him. And putting out the torch would also bust Supreme, so... Never mind. <clears throat> I can I can safely say Supreme's not possible. So once we have our six broadhead arrows, I'm gonna head up these stairs right here. This may be ill-advised, but I think I'm going to wait for him to face the other hallway and then try to slide past him into the main stairwell. Oh, no, worked just fine. Now, all this for a few coppers a week. Does that seem fair? <sighs> Only one guard to worry about here in the stairwell. I'm just going to wait for him to turn, and then I'm going to... Follow him up, being wary, of course, of the other stationary guy. So on the landing, halfway up, another piece of jade, another hundred, brings my total to Now I find it simplest to get to the top by mantling on the crate, waiting for him to get to the top, turn back around, and then mantling over the balcony. Like so. <laughs> nice and easy, see? Now we can head through here. Do be careful because this is the end point for a servant's patrol. So we're going to wait for him right here. And when he turns around, we'll follow him into that room. Apparently, he's quite sleepy. <clears throat> so now we'll follow him in. There's nothing in this room but a note on the table. Nestor, I've had the Sergeant at Arms sacked again. The gilded helm you won at the Summer's Day tourney has gone missing. Did Julian take it? It's worth quite a bit, sentimental value aside. Bertram. So I find it best because he pauses at the end for so long just to wait for him to cycle back out there and then move on when we can get in behind him. learned a hard lesson the more I've tried to ghost for real that's the key to the key to success is almost always patience so once we get into this room grab the candlestick off that table another 25 brings me to 23 percent we can pick this lock shouldn't be any problem left right left left right if we go fast enough, we should be able to shut the door without a green alert. Yeah, I think we're good. So in this room, 
There's a chest with a silver goblet inside. Another 50 brings me to 25%. And what we really need to do is push this crate out of the way. And that we do need to be careful with. Not that there's anything we can do about it except wait for timing, but people can hear that, so just listen for alerts. Both when you move it out and for Supreme, I'll be, mo I'll be moving it back when I come in. So we need to get across this balcony. Just kind of pay attention to the archer. Try and time him. Lord Mortimer Rutherford the Mad, painted by Master Arlek. Grab the painting. It's worth 200, brings me to 35%. And it's a piece of special loot. Looks like we got that done with no alerts. Now I want to just push this crate back where it was, give or take a little bit. And with that, we're ready to move on and tackle the inner quarters. <sighs> My preference is to take the downstairs entrance, so I'm going to get back there. The archer's at the top of the stairs right now, which affords us a great opportunity to just follow him down. <clears throat> Going down, you want to just walk down the stairs, because dropping onto the crate usually makes too much noise, and you can... It's really just a matter of distance in this game. There's no tricky way to jump fast and hit a silent edge like you could with the dark engine. That little, that handy little quirk is gone. So he'll turn to his right. I want to just wall flatten. <sighs> time any movement here so I don't get flagged by the stationary guy and we'll move right along we just have to bypass this guy again which is no real trouble at all just wait for him to turn and face the window like he always does. Bunch of gossips and lazy good for nothings, that's what. It's no wonder I hate my job. And I discovered we actually can pass him by. So. That accomplished. Head for the funky mist. That signifies a load zone. And we'll head to the inner quarters. From each of us, the glyphs will desire a different aspect. This is the balance we have struck. Excerpt from the Interpreter's Codex, Volume 8. I do like that they at least uh, livened up the load zones with those flavor quotes. If I can remember, I'll read those to you in case you have trouble reading the words, but... Because they actually are mission-specific, and they change as the game goes on. So to start off with the inner quarters, just shadow this guy out to the courtyard. Head through this door on the right. We'll tackle the dining room kitchen area first. Right here. This one is left, right, left. 
shut it behind us. All night sewing the new uniforms for Lord Ember. Hands all bloody this morning. And Julian will change them right back when he returns. You mark me. You think he'll come back? I never said that. <clears throat> I never said it either. So one of them just goes to the end of the hall, stands at the window. The other patrols around the dining room, which will become a problem for us, but not quite yet, because I'm going to clear the kitchen first. So if we head through these arches to the right, we find a copper candlestick on that shelf. Another 25 brings me to 36%. I'm going to creep right into the kitchen. Cook's heading out of this room right now, which is perfect. On the table, there's another copper goblet. Another 25 brings me to 37%. If I creep up here, while the cook is working, he's very distracted. He'll see almost nothing. But I like to get to this shelf. and pull up if I can get Garrett to flatten onto it wait for him to walk down the hall to his room or into the other room either way then if we move forward here we can grab his health potion and since he's elsewhere can head through this door to get to his bedroom first things first open the chest Grab the plate, 75, a silver plate, brings me up to 41%, and he's got reading material. Cook's Journal. My errand in the city is done, but it's for nothing. Julian's medallion has been stolen. If Julian is fool enough to come now, I'll still open the side entrance for him, but I fear the outcome. He'll try to take Ember's medallion, and there'll be blood for sure. If Julian had treated me better, <clears throat> I'd have told him about the new portcullis protecting the vault, and the switch that opens it in Lord Ember's chamber. But I cannot carry on this farce of serving two masters. One way or another, the two dogs are going to fight this out, the scared poodle and the whipped cur. I only hope my part in this is never discovered. If it is, I'll say I never told Julian about the portcullis. Maybe that'll be enough. And so it has canceled the objective. The vault is protected by a portcullis. Search Lord Ember's chambers to figure out how to open the portcullis. We've added an objective. Find and activate the secret switch in Lord Ember's chambers to open the vault's portcullis. Let's see, has it changed anything else? Yes, we've added a note. The Cook's Journal said there's a secret switch to the vault portcullis in Lord Ember's chambers. Now I'll pick open this door to escape. Left, right, left. This will allow me to get out without uh, having to sneak past the cook, which is handy. But you have to be careful with those big metal doors because they make a lot of noise. I'm going to handle the dining room next. And this will be the first instance where we see somebody alert to the fact that loot is missing. Ooh, um, thought I might have seen. Anyway, first I'm going to go after the goblets that are on the dining room table, because they're the hardest part of this little transaction. The trick is, the left side of the room is off limits because, although he's drunk, there's a guard facing into the room from that archway, and if we're close enough to it, he'll see us. So we have to do all of our looting from the east side. I like that the compass is a feature on the bottom of the screen, and I don't have to pull it up in the inventory to use it anymore. <clears throat> So if we can just get over here, she'll probably see me, but... Huh? Yeah, I knew. I, I don't quite have enough time for that, so I'll have to wait for her to cycle again, which is no big deal.
There are two goblets on the table that are valuable. The one on the end and the one there in the middle. She'll notice when they are missing. So I'm going to take them one at a time and let her yellow alert each time. Because if you don't do that, if you don't wait for them to settle, and they notice two or three pieces of loot missing at once, sometimes those alert statuses will stack and they'll go full on red. So it's better, although a little bit more painstaking, to take one at a time, let them notice, and let them settle between each pilfering. So I got the one from the center. That's 25. Things just don't disappear. I bet it was the new girl. Oh, that sweet bit is just an act. Who's there? Brings me to 42%. And then her yellow alert has yellow alerted the drunk guard outside. So we have to wait for everybody to settle. I mentioned this in the... Uh, general comments in the last mission and it says so in the description but it's worth repeating huh. well, I guess I just made it all up missing loot oh, alerts boredom. are a feature Let's face it. A servant's life is dull 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 missing loot alerts are a feature of thief 3 that weren't present in the first two the ghost rules say that the only evidence of your passing should be the loot you have stolen so, I think that alerts related to missing loot don't bust my ghost. Oops. Like I need to wait until she starts dusting. She'll turn around and dust that end table. That's when it's safe to make my move. <clears throat> so the two of them yellow alerted just then. That was not related to me being seen or heard. It was only because of some missing loot. I say that's not a bust. So now I got the second goblet off the end of the table. Another 25 brings my total to 43%. Oh, looks like she only notices the center one. Okay. I'll give her another cycle just to be sure. Because the next loot I want are the candlesticks right above the fireplace. So when she's uh, walking down the it south... Here last time I checked. There it is. I knew she was going to alert. So I'll wait for this yellow alert to settle. So far, that's 3% that we would have to skip if we were going for Supreme, so... Until it adds up to 10, the loot alerts don't make Supreme ghosting impossible, but... Like I said, I'm not... Even though it's a yellow alert, if it's related to missing loot, I'm not gonna treat it as busting Supreme or full-on ghost. Well, someone's gotta clean under there, and it ain't gonna be me. Why should I do it? Now that her back is turned, I'm going to grab the candlesticks above the fireplace real quick. Two coppers, 25 each, bring my total up to 45%. Now I'm going to creep back to the hallway because we're almost done clearing the dining room. Which, make no mistake, is a big relief. I'm going to wait and see if she yellow alerts again about those candlesticks. That I'm not certain of, because it looks like they're in shadow, so she may not notice that they're missing. But I'm going to wait and see just to be sure, because she will yellow alert again when I grab that last goblet. So I don't want any alerts to stack. <laughs> oh, 
Looks like she doesn't notice the candlesticks. Well, that's good. I'm gonna wait here until she finishes dusting that end table, grab the goblet, wait for the last yellow alert, and then move on. I like her little dusting pantomime. So we grab this, another copper goblet, another 25, brings my total to 47%. moved it, was it? But who? So the woman in the hall heard her yellow alert here oh in the God, dining Jack. room. But if it's a rat or something, I'm gonna scream. Hmm, nothing, <clears throat> is it? Oh, well, back to work then. See, well, I could have imagined it, I, I guess. So alerts spread between AIs like that, too. She yellow alerts when she sees the missing loot, and you saw that the first one, her yellow alert spread to the guard in the hall, and this time, it wasn't yellow, but this woman here heard her comments and green alerted herself. So you can see why I'm eager to avoid, even though I don't qualify it as a bust if it's just missing loot, I'm eager to avoid alert stacking. I don't want anyone to go red. Or things will get much harder. Ugh, stomach's growling away. When's that dinner coming? That's what I want. So we can just track this guard. Be careful of being seen by people above us, but it's not too hard to avoid. Break right in here. Don't worry about noise, you can ride this elevator up with no trouble. Then I send it back down, because there's very little need for it. Getting past this guy is very straightforward. We can just wall flatten and creep right by him. No comments at all. Okay. So now we have left to do Elizabeth's Tower and Ember's Chambers. I'm going to hit Elizabeth's Tower first. That's where things can get hairy, but even if we end up with the hard setup, I've found a way to solve it. Milady Elizabeth is a proper lady. She attended Lady Pollock's school for young ladies, and she can write in both ancient brilliant and modern prinkish. Hmm. Well, I guess that's something. Your Lord Ember's knowledge of the world is limited to the names of his ancestors and equine diseases of the mouth. I don't like the way she looks at me. Like I've been sneaking about or something. Well, you are a bit unkempt. It's them stairs. She has me up there five times a night changing the torches. Oh, indeed. I shall inform Milady of your displeasure. Don't you dare. So there's a copper goblet under the stairs. Another 25 brought me to 48%. The guard on the stairs is our one big potential problem. We need to wait for the woman in green to turn her back before we follow him upstairs. Sometimes he patrols the staircase. That's the easy configuration. That's what we want. Sometimes he just walks to the top and freezes. That is difficult to deal with. Uh. 
He is patrol. For that same reason, I want to be as fast as I can inside Elizabeth's bedroom because I think every time he hits the top of the stairs, there's a chance that he'll stop. So I'll just wait right here in this handy spot I found for him to patrol past me heading down. Then I'll zip up the stairs behind him. So you can see the uh, central pillar technology is very confusing to this poor fellow. So inside Elizabeth's bedroom without incident, right, left, left, right for the lock. Open it up. When we're up here, there's lots to do. First on her shelf, there are two copper coins and a silver coin. 25, 25, 50, bring me up to 52%. There are two things to read on this same bookshelf. Personal stores, arsenic, sufficient, atropine, sufficient, belladonna, gone stale, cyanide, sufficient, hemlock, running low, jimson weed, require new source. Poisons. Better make sure I wash my hands when I get out of here. And this one. Lady Elizabeth's Journal, page 52. This house is not safe for me. My spy tells me Julian is planning a bloody return. I spend my evenings in the city to avoid this, but still I go armed day and night with blade and venom. If necessary, I can flee at a moment's notice with the little treasure I acquired from the armory. Until then, I have this sham marriage to make with a sham husband. I care not which of them it is now. The arsenic will do for either. Ember touched me again today, just on the hand, but it was horrible. Interesting letter from Lady Warwick. Ember's suffering must be exquisite, watching his only friend slowly waste away to nothing better than any poison I could deliver. On the bed. Dearest Lizzie, may I still call you that? I remember it from when you were just a child. I am writing to see if you know of any tincture to help our poor afflicted Clive. He is wasting away, barely speaking or moving, staring at a piece of treasure from his last excursion. The doctors are of no help, and I fear the worst. Little as I wish to, I must beg your help. If not for yourself, do it for Lord Ember. Clive's dear friend, and your, dare I say, betrothed? Or for the memory of your dear mother, whom I do remember fondly. Yours, Lady Eleanor Warwick. There are two other things to grab in here. If you mantle up onto her bookshelf... Oops. Sometimes Garrett uh, flies in Thief Deadly Shadows, as you can see. And usually the only way to... Sometimes you, sometimes you can resolve it if you can make him land some... But generally speaking, if you get the flying Garrett glitch, you're just going to have to reload. <clears throat> Oops. Well, no, no matter. Reread everything right quick without actually Poisons. reading. Better make sure I wash my hands when I get out of here. <laughs> there, mantle onto the bookshelf, and you can reach. A jade necklace on top of the bed, that's 50, brings my total to 55%. Then, open the chest. It's just, uh, up, right, left. It's got a gilded helm in it, worth 300, brings my total to 69%, and it's the second piece of special loot. Now it sounds to me like our friend has stopped at the top of the stairs, which is going to be trouble. Huh? Yes. Did I hear that? He has stopped. Getting downstairs past him is actually a harder maneuver than getting upstairs past him is, but at least we got that one little reprieve. So don't bump into the chair. Let me show you what we're dealing with first and foremost. So you can see he's standing right there, covering the exit. F 
first thing I want to do, although it increases the distance a little bit, well, maybe I don't want to do that. It's possible to get by him with only a green alert, but I don't think there's any way to avoid that green alert. What was that? I knew it was nothing all along. Ah! Oh! Aha! This will be short and... So maybe you can see what I was going for and maybe you can't. The trick to this guy is that you can use his own shadow against him. If you can get right beside him and crouch down in the shadow he casts on the wall with only a green alert, he can't see you in there. So I'm just going to try and get him to look to the right, same as I did with the uh, Blue Heron Inn guard. Huh? Ha! Oh. Who's that in the stairway? I got excited when he turned his head, but he turned it the wrong way. Maybe I should try to get to the shadows outside the stairs, because then if he turns his head to the left, I can probably just get all the way past him with only the green alert. Let me. Thought I heard something. Bam. Like a boss. So we supreme busted. We had to take a green alert, but ghost remains intact and supreme was busted anyway. Be careful of the woman in green. That just happened to be excellent timing. Now we need to cross this room. Without flagging any alerts, which might be tough on this particular attempt because of this guy's torch. Parola. Yep. But with that guard solved, everything's pretty easy now. The fact that green alerts make them turn their heads and that head turning actually affects their vision. You know, frankly, I like it much better than I like using glitches like we had to do in the dark engine. A few more afternoons at the practice yard and I'll get it. Now, I want to get over to this window and wait for Lord Ember. His chambers are past this guard. The good news is there is another way in. But he's gonna come out and chastise his guards to be alert and whatnot. I want to clear his room while he's outside. I'm ready to fight. Any thieves out tonight? I feel uh. sorry for him. I can see the efforts of long past to have held it. And now, myself. Leading the family back to the days of glory. Such a beautiful hue. Here he comes. What are you looking at? Ice front! Yes, Lord Ember. Wake up there, imbecile! Yes, sir! I want to get this key off his belt. And that's that. While he's away, you want to mantle out this window. <laughs> Creep down. Go ahead and move over to Ember's room. It's empty right now, so let's move quickly and let's nail it. Goblet on the table. 25 brings me to 70%. 
Lord Ember's journal. The opal is what's important. Julian will stop at nothing to take it from me, and I cannot become complacent. Even if he subverts the guards, they cannot get by the new portcullis. I alone control the switch here by my desk where I am safe. This castle is rotten with conspiracy. Were it not for dear Elizabeth, I'm sure I would lose my mind. Even the portrait of Mortimer the Mad stares down at me from the stairwell balcony as if to name me unworthy of the opal. Those eyes! Surely Arlek was the greatest of the old masters. I ought to guard it more carefully. It's worth all the other paintings combined. So quiet here tonight. Since Lord Warwick died, there's no one left to talk to. My only friend, why did you waste away staring at that abominable cursed stone? I'm certain there was some witchery involved. I hear they have donated it to the Wieldstrom Museum and good riddance. So other goodies to grab in here, there's a key on his bookshelf right here. On top of this bookshelf, a silver candlestick worth 50, brings my total to 72%. Above the fireplace. Another medallion. Wonder if anyone will pay more for a matched set. Another Rutherford medallion worth 150, brings my total to 80%. And that's the third piece of special loot, which ticks off that objective. Fantastic. Now, on his desk, there is a silver coin, worth 50, brings my total to 82%. A copper coin, worth 25, brings my total to 83%. Up there, you that yes, torch sir. is the secret switch to operate the portcullis. And you'll notice that we weren't able to operate it again to reclose the portcullis. So there's no need... I thought he was- I thought I heard him coming back. So we'll wait for him to decide to head out of the room again. He'll yellow alert to something. I don't know which loot he notices. Probably either the medallion or the coins on his desk or both. Anyway, we can just wait right here and we're safe from detection. Stolen it? Oh, he noticed the goblet on the table. Still just a yellow alert. My mistake. Sorry. Green alerted the guard outside, but no problem. I can't think what it was. Anyway, as I was saying, you probably noticed that I couldn't reactivate the portcullis switch. So there's no way to reclose it, so we don't have to come back here after we clear the vault, which is good. I'm just gonna wait. No one take my side in all this. I'm just gonna wait for him to leave the room again. Someone's taking it. Another yellow alert <clears throat> from some other piece of loot we've stolen. Come out, miss. I'm sure you're a pretty thing. <laughs> what a skis. Once I find you, I'm docking your pay, for sure. I think he's noticed more than one thing, which is why this yellow alert is prolonged. Hasn't stacked all the way to red yet, which is good, otherwise I... This has been entirely too much time wasted. They have to obey me. It's mine. They have to. There we go. Mm. Good, good, good. Only yellows, and now he's seen everything he's going to see. Anyway, with all that, I'm pretty certain that in order to hit 90%, you'd have to take at least some of the loot-related yellow alerts. Well, 90% aside, you have to take the Rutherford Medallion, Straighten because there, it's the... Disgusting hunchback. Yes, sir. Because it's the third piece of special loot... And I'm pretty sure it's one of the things he notices. Yes, sir. Now that the room's empty again, I'll open this chest. Very simple. Left, right, left. Inside is a jade. Another hundred. Brings my total to 88%. Then, it's just a simple matter of making our way back outside. You can't silent drop that, so you'll notice it's up higher than that window was. So just hope no one hears you. 
Grab the Jade Ring off the balcony before you leave. That's another 50, brings me up to 90%, and no surprise there, hits the 90% objective. And finally, I have also ticked off the find and activate the secret switch in Lord Ember's chambers to open the Vault's Portcullis objective. Booyah. So with all that, we can just drop down onto the grass. and head back to the castle front. Like I said, because we can't reclose the portcullis, there's no reason for us to come back here. So, back to the castle front. Only the virtuous can withstand the builder's trial by fire. The sinful are consumed from a Hammerite sermon. Just head past the armory, past the uh, servant in the art gallery again. I'm going to wait for him to stop moving and face the window. Finally take a right to get to the basement. Now you see two guards here, one stationary, and the big fella. It's very easy to get through here with no alerts at all. I'm going to go ahead and do a real save with all that done just because. I haven't done a real save since the very beginning of the mission, which, now that I think about it, just seems like bad policy. <sighs> so I'm going to wait for him to patrol back that direction. <sighs> and get down these stairs behind him. The Rutherford family vault. That opal is as good as mine. You see these two plaques, you can't actually read either of them. So we hit the door. Garrett uses his medallion and it opens. There's no way to reclose that either. Inside the vault. Another key, two pieces of jade, 100 each, bring my total to 95% and 100%. And finally, the bloodline so opal. this is what they all wanted. Well, it's better off with me. So with all that accomplished, we have everything. We just have to get to the front gate now. We'll leave the way we came. So he's headed over to the balcony right now, so I can probably get out behind him before he turns around. Oh, he'll... I thought for sure he was going to green alert, but he didn't. Awesome. So I like to just creep back out the way we came. Wait here until he's patrolling back the other direction. Thing we need to wall flatten it just <laughs> comforts me for some reason. So we can get through there without any trouble. Then we creep back down here. And you might recognize this as the spot we came in. I doubt, doubtless, he's going to green alert when I shut the door again. He doesn't. How odd. He did the first time. Oh, well. So anyway. Mantle out the window. We can run into a bit of a t timing problem there, so... 
because Garrett's going to make noise when he drops out of that window, I think. So we can just wait until we hear the patroller head farther away. Now we should be good. Excellent. So you got to get across that patch of light. That's the most problematic spot, honestly. <sighs> Stay crouched. Stick to the wall. And you should be able to creep along the outside of the courtyard without ever getting any alerts from anyone. We actually have to approach the front gate in order to end the mission. So you want to angle out toward the supply All cart quiet. here. Ah, eh, bugger off. Go through this strip of shadow and approach the gate from over here. And the mission will end. I'll go ahead and let Garrett debrief you. I'll load up the start of the day in the city and then I'm going to save and stop. You're about to end the mission. Do you want to continue? Yes. The bloodline opal's mine now, and based on the size of this thing, I'd say it was worth it. But something tells me this Lady Elizabeth character had her own plans for the Rutherfords. I'd better get the opal to Perry soon. He can cut it into smaller stones that are easier to move. And we'll both make a tidy profit. So we've ghosted perfect thief to end of the bloodline. We couldn't supreme ghost it. Simply because, even though I disregard loot-based alerts, uh, <clears throat> Benny green alerts when we shut the door through the entrance. The only other entrance options are the front door, which will always trigger some kind of alert, and the side door, which requires us to use a water arrow to put out the torch. So, regardless of which of the three entrances we choose, Supreme Ghost will be busted, sadly. But Ghost is more than possible, Perfect Thief is more than possible by, you know, the rules I've devised, because there aren't really any official rules that fully control Thief 3. Anyway, let's look at the stats. Difficulty, Expert, time elapsed 44 minutes, loot stolen, 2125 out of 2125, 100%. Times caught, 0, opponents blackjack, 0, opponents killed, 0, stealthy kills, 0, non-combatants killed, 0, locks picked, 9, pockets picked, 1. Bodies discovered, zero. Damage taken, zero. Healing taken, zero. Total for game. Time elapsed, 54 minutes. Loot stolen, 23.25. Times caught, zero. Opponents blackjacked, one. The innkeeper in the training mission. Opponents killed, zero. Stealthy kills, zero. Non-combatants killed, zero. Locks picked, ten. Pockets picked, one. Bodies discovered, zero. Damage taken, zero. Healing taken, zero. Here it just shows us all of our lovely ticked off objectives. Let's look at what we're walking out with. Anything that we haven't described? No. Quest items. We've got, in addition to the velvet bag, we now have the bloodline opal and three different keys. Loot. We've got a total of 2325. You see all these goodies. And this bears mentioning for the city segments. You'll notice that there are different types over here on the left. You see there's gold, artwork, and gems. Any given fence will only buy two out of three loot types, which means we have to make our way around the city in order to fence all of our stuff. And that's it. Let's hit continue. So here we're arriving in our first city hub. I'm just going to wait for Garrett to finish his opening remarks and then save and do the city hub next time. South Quarter, one of the city's most crowded residential districts in the center of town, near the river. It's not wall-to-wall -wall nobility like Haldale, but there's money here, if you know where to look. South Quarter's where I live, so I guess this is home. As long as I behave myself, I can go anywhere and do as I please, and the residents won't give me any trouble. But the city watch will. The entire force knows what I look like, and they'll attack me on sight. If I don't stay out of the way of their patrols, I might be looking at some jail time, or worse. First thing I need to do is see my fence, Heartless Perry. His shop is down in Black Alley. I'm bringing Perry the bloodline of Opal. I don't want to hang on to this stone any longer than I have to. Something about that job has left me with a bad feeling. Alright, Garrett's building, day one in the city. 
So before anything gets started, it hasn't even given me an objective yet. That's perfect. I'm going to hit a real save right here. Like I said, I'm leaving the uh, Blue Heron in save intact for now, just in case the headset didn't work. But with that, I will see you all next time. I'm getting out of here. Bye-bye.